The Bible tells us, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It says to receive with meekness the implanted Word, which is able to save your souls, and to be diligent to present yourself approved to God, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. Join us now for the 3ABN Sabbath School panel. Our study today is the Book of Daniel. Hello and welcome to 3ABN Sabbath School panel. I'm Jill Morricone and we're so glad that you've taken time from your day to join us in our study of the book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. We're on lesson number six, From Arrogance to Destruction. Now it's interesting, even the titles tell you of last week's lesson and this week's that we're going to have a very different outcome than we did last week. Last week, of course, we talked about from pride to humility, Daniel chapter 4 and Nebuchadnezzar and how the judgment of God came upon him, but he humbled his heart and was converted. This week is King Belshazzar, and we see he did not humble his heart, and this night that we're going to talk about in Daniel chapter 5, he's killed and the Babylonian Empire is given over to the Medes and to the Persians, fulfilling actually Daniel 2, Daniel 7 Bible prophecy. I want to introduce our panel at this time. To my left, Pastor Ryan Day, privileged to have you here. That's good to be here. Thank you. To your left, Pastor Kenny Shelton, always a joy to study the Word it's of God It's a together. real treat. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Then Sister Shelley Quinn, thank you so much for your insight into God's Word as well. Oh, you know, I learned so much from each one of you. And I was just thinking, we are sitting here with several hundred pages of notes among us mm -hmm. on this one little book. That's right. How exciting to uh, deep study. Absolutely. I love that deep study. And speaking of deep study, Pastor John, thank you for your deep study of the Word of God yeah. and for being here. Praise the Lord. I'm looking forward to this one on the fall of Babylon. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm chomping at the bits. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll jump right into it. Ryan, would you pray for Absolutely. us? Absolutely. Father in heaven, Lord, here we are again in another week of 3ABN Sabbath School panel. And as those around the world and us here are about to open your word, Lord, um, we certainly wouldn't do it without your leadership and guidance. So we ask for your Holy Spirit right now to give us the words, give us the correct expressions and the ability to communicate this word the way that you would, Lord. So each and every one of us are edified and brought closer to Jesus. We praise you for this opportunity and we thank you for your never-ending love, grace and mercy. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I want to encourage you to go to the following website so you can get your own copy of the quarterly and follow along with us. That website is absg.adventist.org. That stands for Adult Bible Study Guide.adventist.org. Or we always encourage you to visit your local Seventh day Adventist church and they would give you a quarterly and welcome you in fellowship and study of the Word of God yeah. together want to make sure we read our memory text as we jump into this lesson from arrogance to destruction. The memory text is not actually from Daniel chapter 5, it's from Daniel chapter 2. Daniel 2 verse 21. He changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. Mm -hmm. Now we want to just take a moment and set up the time period as it were leading into um, this portion. On Sunday's lesson we have Belshazzar's feast, the beginning of it, the first four verses which we will jump into. But before we do that, uh, Daniel was taken captive and he was brought to Babylon when he was a young man in his mid late teens, 605 BC. This night, Daniel chapter 5 all takes place in one night. This uh -huh. night is in 539 BC. So almost 70 years have passed since Daniel came as a young man. And Daniel is now an older man who has been serving in governmental capacity for all of these years. Now, Daniel 4, we had the conversion of Nebuchadnezzar, and obviously sometime after that point, Nebuchadnezzar passed away. History tells us he died in 562 B.C. So that means it's probably 23 years from his death to Daniel chapter 5. So you read the Bible and you think, oh, it's just another verse, but we're talking years have passed and have a lot of history has right. taken place, as it were. Nebuchadnezzar's son took over the throne. His name, Evil... Can you imagine naming your son that? I just got to stop a minute. Oh. Evo Merodach. Why would you name your son that? Or he's also called Amal Marduk. Mm -hmm. He only reigned a couple years. 
And then the son-in-law of Nebuchadnezzar reigned a couple years after that. He died of natural causes. And then the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar took over. He was assassinated after less than a year. Oh. And then a gentleman by the name of Nabonidus became king of Babylon. He ruled for 17 years. Partway into his rulership, his son Belshazzar became a co-regent, as it were, with right. his father. This explains why Pastor Ryan in Daniel chapter 5 later, Belshazzar offers to Daniel, mm -hmm. he says, I'll make you the third ruler. Because really, right. technically, Belshazzar could have been the second ruler because right. he's co-reigning with his father. Mm -hmm. Belshazzar is the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar, not through Nabonidus, but through his mother, which is very fascinating. Daniel 5 proves the accuracy of the Word of God. Mm. Remember in Daniel chapter 2, the image. Daniel had said, after you, after the head of gold, after Babylon, shall arise a kingdom inferior to you. And this prediction takes place here in Daniel chapter 5. It also records Belshazzar's open defiance mm. of the God of heaven mm. and the judgment of God that came down upon him. Mm. So let's read the first four verses here. Verse 1, Belshazzar the king made a great feast for a thousand of his lords mm. and drank wine in the presence of the thousand. Now, it's interesting. I can't even imagine a party with a thousand people yeah. as guests. And then you have the wives in addition to that. But they said in ancient times, Persian monarchs sometimes would dine with as many as 15,000 people. Mm. So by contrast, maybe this is a small dinner engagement. Right. So the size might not be unusual, but the setting most certainly is. We know the Medo-Persians had already been engaging in battle. Nabonidus had gone to fight against them. And the surrounding area had been captured, but Babylon had remained, you could say, it had not fallen. They had not captured Babylon. Maybe the feast was to ignore their problems or to bolster their faith in their pagan gods. I don't know, but they had this feast. Verse 2, while he tasted the wine, Belshazzar gave command to bring the gold and silver vessels, uh -oh. which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple, which had been in Jerusalem, that the king and his lords, his wives, his concubines might drink from them. Verse 3, then they brought the gold vessels that had been taken from the temple of the house of God, which had been in Jerusalem. And the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines drank from mm. them. Mm. Now, these vessels we know were taken when Nebuchadnezzar first invaded Jerusalem. They were taken when Daniel was made a captive back in 605 B.C. But Nebuchadnezzar showed these vessels respect, in a sense, because he brought them into the house of his God. Mm -hmm. But here Belshazzar is taking the sacred vessels from the house. Mm. And he is defiling them mm -hmm. by using them in some sort of pagan, drunken revelry. Right. Not only that, he uses these sacred vessels that are representative of God, and he praises his pagan gods. Mm -hmm. We see that in verse 4. Mm -hmm. They drank wine, and they praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze and iron, wood and stone. Now there's six gods, six mentioned, right? Gold, silver, bronze, iron, wood, stone. Now it's interesting mm -hmm. to me, have you heard those metals before? Mm -hmm. Or most of those metals before? Gold right. being the head of the image of Babylon, mm -hmm. silver, Medo-Persia, the chest of silver, Right. Bronze, the belly of bronze, that was Greece. Legs, iron, Rome. Now, the only metal that's different is it says wood instead mm -hmm. of the feet being iron and clay. And then, of course, the stone, and that was Christ's everlasting kingdom, the stone that was cut out without hands. So it's interesting to me to see that. Now, in our remaining time, we're going to do a quick comparison between Daniel chapter 5, which is present-day Babylon. Mm -hmm. And Revelation chapter 17, mm -hmm. which is end time Babylon. Mm -hmm. I see seven comparisons. There might be more, but we're just going to go over seven here in the time we have. The first comparison in Daniel. Belshazzar made his subjects drunk. We just read that. Mm -hmm. They drank wine out of these vessels. In Revelation, this is Revelation 17 verse 2, end time Babylon, the harlot, the prostitute, she makes the kings of the earth drunk uh -huh. with the wine of her fornication. Uh -huh. We know that indicates the false doctrines, the drinking of right. that, the wine. Second comparison, in Daniel, Belshazzar induced his nobles and his subjects to immorality. Oh, now in Revelation 17, end time Babylon, 
the, protest the prostitute induced the kings of the earth to commit spiritual fornication sure. with her. Mm -hmm. We see that in Revelation 17 too, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Now this symbolizes the union of the spiritual and the political powers when they commit that spiritual fornication as it were. This is the kings of the earth, the political powers with the prostitute who represents the apostate religious system, Babylon. Mm -hmm. Then we have comparison three. And Daniel, Belshazzar and his guests, they drank drunk from the golden goblets. Right. Remember mm -hmm. the gold vessels that mm -hmm. were taken from uh, that Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple in Jerusalem. Now in Revelation, the prostitute drinks from the golden cup. Verse 4, Revelation 17, 4, the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup mm -hmm. full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Mm -hmm. Comparison number four, in Daniel, judgment was pronounced against ancient Babylon. Now, I won't read that, but we're going to see later a hand comes on the scene uh -huh. and writes some words of judgment against Babylon. Now, end time Babylon in Revelation, judgment is pronounced against end time Babylon. We see that in Revelation 17, verse 1. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me saying, come, I will show you the judgment of the great right. harlot who mm -hmm. sits on many waters. Right. Fifth comparison, in Daniel, Belshazzar dishonored God in the worship of these pagan gods, in the worship of these false gods. End time Babylon in Revelation will blaspheme God mm -hmm. and challenge his authority. Revelation 17, verse 3, he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. End time Babylon will blaspheme mm -hmm. God and challenge his authority. That's right. Comparison number six, ancient Babylon was built over the river Euphrates. And we're going to find out as we journey through this story that that's how the Medo-Persians captured the city, was drawing up of the river Euphrates. That's a prophecy from Isaiah 44. End time Babylon is built over the symbolic river Euphrates. Final comparison, Daniel in ancient Babylon mixed the treasures of God's sanctuary with pagan revelry. Mm -hmm. They took these, these golden vessels from the sanctuary, which were pure and holy, and combined them with pagan worship. Mm -hmm. End time Babylon will mix paganism, yes. spiritualism mm -hmm. with these false doctrines and we'll mix them together. So mm -hmm. what comparisons we see in the word of God, this night is a night of judgment. Mm -hmm. right. Belshazzar and the entire kingdom of Babylon is judged. And Ryan, you have an uninvited guest. That's right. Monday's lesson is entitled An Uninvited Guest. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like the title of this. Um, you know, I back in my heathen days, I was a partier. Well. <laughs> I was a professional disc jockey for four and a half years and so I've had my fair share of parties and I'm certainly not proud to say that but nonetheless it's my past and the, at some of these parties you would often have what are known as party crashers and so uh, as we see here these people uh, Belshazzar and his people they're they're partying it up mm -hmm. um, probably not like it's 1999 but they're certainly partying it up and uh, a a, a party crasher shows up and we know that this is of course God. God is showing up and he, we see that he intervenes in this particular situation and uh, the mood of the party changes really quickly. <laughs> and so we see that as we begin reading in Daniel chapter 5 verses 5 through 8. Notice what the Bible says. In the same hour, the fingers of a man's hand appeared and wrote opposite the lampstand on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. Mm. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. 
Then the king's countenance changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his hips were loosened and his knees knocked against each other. I promise you he wasn't doing an Elvis impression. He was certainly, certainly, uh, I mean, I would think to myself if this happened to me, I would probably be terrified too. But nonetheless, it continues to say in verse 7, the king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. The king spoke saying to the wise men of Babylon, whoever reads this writing, Writing and tells me its interpretation mm -hmm. shall be clothed with the purple and have a chain, excuse me, clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around his neck mm -hmm. and he shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Now all the king's wise men came, but they could not read the writing or make known the king its interpretation. Mm -hmm. And so it's interesting. We're going to draw some comparisons to what's happened before to what's happening now because, um, you know, King Nebuchadnezzar, as we have been studying, you know, he had indeed an interesting experience with the Lord, a journey. But this young man seems to be much more arrogant, much, much more drowning in the paganistic practices and theories of the day so much that he has a complete disrespect for that which is holy. And as Jill brought out wonderfully, uh, we see that the results of this causes God to say, that's enough. Mm. Uh, that's, you've crossed the line. Now I must intervene and I must show up and I must do what needs to be done. Now it's interesting here. I found this quote from Testimonies to Ministers, page 436. And notice how she describes it. She says, a light like the lightning followed the form, forming of each letter and lingered there, making them living characters of awful and terrible significance to all who looked upon them. That's an interesting description. Mm -hmm. Many, many, many tekel you farsen. Their very ignorance of those letters traced upon the wall, standing there flashing with light, mm -hmm. sent terror to their sinful hearts. Mm -hmm. Their aroused consciences interpreted these letters to be a dis, a dis uh, excuse me, a denunciation against them. Suspicion, fear, and alarm took a hold, took a hold of the king and princes. And so, as you can see, and you kind of visually in your mind, they're parting it up, and then this hand comes out of nowhere, and she describes it, Ellen White describes it as it lit up. As, as lightning that was dancing across this wall as the letters just stuck out. And of course, everyone in terror looks upon them and they can't even understand what it says, but they knew it wasn't good news. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it's interesting that the king's response would be very similar to that of Nebuchadnezzar's as we, that we find in Daniel chapter 2. So when, Dan, when, when King Nebuchadnezzar was, sh was shook by the dream in Daniel chapter 2, what did he do? He called on all of his so-called wise men of Babylon. And of course, we see that that is the case here. He seeks and calls all of those who are on the payroll of the kingdom and he calls them in in hopes that they can interpret it. We'll talk about that in just a moment, but I want to go on to talk about the reward because he says, if you could tell me what this means, I'm going to, I'm going to reward you. I'm going to give you, I'm going to clothe you with purple. I'm going to put a gold chain around you. And of course, I'm going to give you the third position in all of Babylon. Now, these obviously are representative of something. And I just want to highlight that because I believe it's vitally important here. So notice purple clothing is a color worn by royalty in ancient times. And we can see a correlation of this in Esther chapter 8 verses 15. So the Bible says in Esther 8 verse 15, so Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel and blue of blue and white with a great crown of gold and a garment of fine linen and purple and the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. So the color purple is often associated with royalty. So, hey, he's saying, look, if you could tell me what this means in his terror as, he's, as his knees are knocking together and he's in this fearful state, mm -hmm. please tell me what this means. And look, I will, I will give you the finest clothing that you could possibly, mm -hmm. again, go into the earthly. Okay, this is a heavenly situation that's happening. There, God has intervened and instead of going to the God of heaven and saying, you know, and pleading his case, I'm going to turn to the elements of the earth. I'm going, to, I'm going to clothe you with the finest linens. I'm going to put the nice gold chain around your neck. And of course, we know a chain of gold, uh, which was a sign of high social status. We find a reference to this in Genesis chapter 41, mm. verse 42, where the Bible says, Then Pharaoh took his signet ring off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand, and he clothed him in garments of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. So here, I'm going to give you my fine linen. I'm going to put my nice jewelry, which is again a nice, interesting 
making reference to that of the harlot in Revelation chapter 17 because the harlot is seen again. She's got the golden cup in her hand. She's got all these precious jewels on her. And what colors is she wearing? She's wearing purple and scarlet, of course. And so she's full of abominations. And so notice how the king in this very serious spiritual moment that God is, is, is getting their attention, all that this king can do is turn to the elements of the earth, turn to all the filthy abominations that he's caused and say, I'm going to reward you with these. Well. And it, it got, gets me to thinking, how many times do we often think that our reward should be that of the filthy abominations of the world. Yeah. We spend our time so in, in, in rap, instead of pausing to realize that Jesus Christ is trying to write a message on our hearts and in our minds to get our attention. Sometimes we get so caught up and distracted by the themes and things right. of the world yes. that we end up looking for the finer things in life to satisfy us. Yes. Put the gold on us, put the, put the ornamental right. jewelry, put the fine clothing, self, 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 which is what this king was wrapped up in very clearly. And of course, the third position mm. in all of the kingdom, which Jill mentioned very clearly, uh, why that would be the case, because actually it's interesting, historically, many people have tried to discredit right. the validity of Daniel based on Daniel chapter 5, because nowhere in secular history is there found a reference to Belshazzar as the king or a ruler of Babylon. But that was, uh, that was all clarified a few years later when they, when they unearthed a, an old ancient tablet of Babylon, which it did clarify that he was the son of Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, I guess that's how you say it, uh, which again was the king of Babylon at the time. In fact, Ellen White confirms this in history. Uh, for those history buffs, the youth's instructor, May, uh, May 19th, 18. She says, admitted to a share in kingly authority. So notice a share in kingly authority, as Jill brought out. He was a co-regent, not mm -hmm. the main king himself, but a co-regent because his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had actually went off at this time mm -hmm. to, uh, to an oasis to try to be cured of an illness he had. Mm -hmm. But she says, at the age of 15 years old, Belshazzar glorif gloried in his power and lifted up his heart against the God of heaven, which is evident because now we're here in Daniel yes. chapter 5 and we're seeing the results. God has showed up and he's saying, I'm not having this, right? Yes. And of course, in Daniel chapter 5 verse 8, which is kind of the capstone of this, it says, now all the king's wise men came, but they could not read the writing. Mm -hmm. He says, hey, come on in here and try to read this writing. I'm going to reward you. And they show up, they're like, uh, which is actually interesting because it was in their language. Yes. It was in the yes. language of the Chaldeans. So they actually could understand the individual words, but they couldn't make out the meaning of what those words were communicating to them until Daniel was to show up and give the correct interpretation. I'm thinking of Isaiah chapter 29, verse 14, which kind of sheds some light on this. It says, for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish mm. and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hidden. In fact, Paul quoted this very verse. And in response to that, notice in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. This is what Paul says in reference to what Isaiah says in Isaiah 29, verse 14. He says, where is the wise? Mm. Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Mm -hmm. Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Mm -hmm. For since in, in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through foolishness of the message preached mm -hmm. to save those who believe. And so here we are in this world, just like at this party, we're parting up with no care in the world. Mm -hmm. We think we're so wise as Daniel is going to tell us later in the, at the end of the book of Daniel that in the last days knowledge shall increase. Mm -hmm. We have all this wisdom, but God is knocking on the door of our hearts saying, Amen. please open. Yeah. You're not as wise as you think, but if you make, if you allow me to come in and renovate and change your heart and mind as he wanted to do to Belshazzar, he says, I will make you clean. I will make you new. But of course we have to be willing. We have yeah. to be humble. Thank you so much, yeah. Pastor Ryan. Incredible job. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to me just to see the judgment of God descend as it were upon Babylon. Mm -hmm. Stay with us. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Amen. Ever wish you could watch a 3 ABN Sabbath School panel again? Or share it on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter? Well, you can by visiting 3ABNSabbathSchoolPanel.com. A clean design makes it easy to find the program you're looking for. There are also links to the Adult Bible Study Guide so you can follow along. Sharing is easy. Just click share and choose your favorite social media. Share a link. Save a life for eternity. 
welcome back to our study of Daniel chapter 5. We'll continue with Pastor Kenny on Tuesday. You know, it's, it's a very interesting uh, part of the lesson here. Enter, enter the queen. You know, enter the queen. <laughs> and I want to say it nicely. Grandma has to come and take care of some things here. <laughs> yeah. You know, really. And sometimes, you know, it, it, it takes that sometime. You know, somebody's right. got a lot of experience and so on and so forth to come in. And we'll see that. But I want to just read and begin so that way we follow along well in Daniel chapter 5, 9, I guess it's through about 12 here. It said that then, then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, which has been mentioned. His countenance was changed. Mm. Notice this in him and his lords were astonished. Now the queen, by the reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house. And the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the gift of the holy gods and in the days of thy father light and understanding and wisdom. And in him, like that the wisdom of the gods was found in him whom the king Nebuchadnezzar thy father the king I say thy father <laughs> made. I love the way it's repeated here. I'm just love the way she's trying to get a point across here. <laughs> we'll right. talk about that in a minute. <laughs> yeah, because he, he, he's afraid, right? He's shaking. He's quivering. That's right. That's right. I say, thy father made master of the magicians, astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge, and understanding and interpreting dreams, and showing the hard sciences. And so he goes on, she goes on and just says, let Daniel be called and he will show the interpretation. Mm -hmm. There I'm seeing faith exercise, aren't you? Oh, right sure. then and there, mm -hmm. uh, her knowledge of the situation because there was not very many around evidently that had this knowledge mm -hmm. at this point in time. So I'm like you when, when uh, you brought up there, both of you, the, the scene was five was one of a festivity. Mm -hmm. There was some thing going on. It got a little, may I say, a little bit wild. They were drinking. When you drink, sometimes maybe you get a little bit wild. So the Bible called it a great feast. So there was things that was going on that you and I probably wouldn't want to be around. But there was, they, the people call it a good time. You know, they're not sure where they're at. They're not sure what they're doing, but they call it a good time. Yeah. And on the morning when they wake up, they're not sure what they did. And they're not feeling real well. And yes, they still call it a good time. I don't care for those kind. The king felt good. He felt good at his feast. And he was, in fact, I think it wasn't the custom was when the, they usually had some of these get, get togethers, that the king actually had another room that he would eat in and drink in. Mm. And so here, but he was feeling so good. He wanted to be with all the people. So he was, it's interesting. I believe the Lord, Lord had this all arranged because the people needed to see his reaction when that writing we see was up on the mm -hmm. wall. Yeah. And so he was out there where it could be seen and so that would challenge them too to make the right ch decisions and choices. And so apparently, again, I think you mentioned that it was in the language where what would be the excuse that they couldn't read it. Right. You know, the whole room was lit up so everybody could see it. Well, they were having a good time. They were having a, <laughs> they were having a good time, so maybe their letters weren't all out there where they could really read it. So it, there was a reason for that for sure. No one could decipher it. So what I was making here as I was reading, no one could decipher it. There must have been a reason once again. Well, I, first thing that happened once again, and this, is, this has been true throughout here to begin with, who did they call? Yeah, they, they, they call the, 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 the head, you know, Mm -hmm. The leaders, they call the, the, the magicians and the, the you know, soothsayers and everybody else in mm -hmm. to interpret here what they should have right quick have learned a lesson and they called upon the God of heaven. Mm -hmm. But no doubt, no doubt the, the divine, the, what was happening here is under divine direction here. With the words a kingdom was to pass away, it was brought up by Sister Jill. Right here, these words were so important because the kingdom was to pass away. Mm -hmm. The probation was closed for the king. It was closed for the kingdom. And for it's closed for those who would follow after the king or the kingdom. Mm. So probation was closed for an awful lot of folks here. Right. And then why? Then all then would understand what was been going on here, what man and God and their relationship and what they had been doing against God was brought very, very clear. This message, this message I believe, is given to the king just the way that heaven ordained it to be. You know, a lot of times right. God gives you a message to give and maybe he's impressing, you know, sometimes pastors and leaders, sometimes to maybe talk to an individual or bring a message. And sometimes we don't want to do that for fear of hurting or making the situation worse. <laughs> but if God gives us that, you know, whatever it might be, that message, we need to give it, I believe, just exactly the way that God oh, said to give the message. Sure. You know, I can bring it from an illustration that I didn't want to do many, many, many 
years ago. They had an elder who uh, his life was one, and I'll just talk about it. it was, he's gone now. Uh, he was a smoker. He accepted the message, came into the church, but he continued to, to do it. And so the Lord impressed on my mind after several years of this. He said, I want you to go to this man and I want you to tell him what he's doing and that it needs to be changed. I made some excuses. I didn't want to quite give the message quite like that because he was not only a good friend, but an elder of the church and so on and so forth. The Lord impressed my mind. Give it just as I give it to you. I want you to sit down. I want you to talk to him. You do it in love. You do it out of concern. But you'll say, I'm impressed with this is what's taking place in your life. And also put yourself out there. And if I be wrong with that, I will apologize to you for that. Mm -hmm. But I'm very much impressed. and I can't get any rest until I bring it. Mm. It was a fact. He broke down in tears and said, yes, for years I have. And mm. th listen to this. I have been praying, he said, for months that God would bring somebody mm. and just expose me. That was kind of an interesting wow. one. Expose mm. me. And then I would know that God would be more merciful. Wow. He would give me the grace and the strength to gain this victory, which I have so desired and I so wanted. Mm. And now I believe it's the day. And you know what? It was the day. Wow. It was the day that God gave give him victory over those well, things. So, God. You know, it, 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 when all else failed, as I, we read these few verses here right quick, what all else failed, uh, call in all the wise men and so on, uh, but nothing worked. And so finally, the, here, come, here come the queen. Here come the queen. She come in, <laughs> right? She was allowed to come in before her son without possibly being put to death. Even his wife. Right? Even the wife could not do that without permission to the king. But she came in without fear of death. And, uh, and so she, she made quite an announcement here. She said, you know, what we want you to do right here is why don't you go back? Don't you remember? I liked it when I was reading that passage right there. She was saying, why don't you go back to the one that we know that did something before? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, didn't want to do that at first. Why was Daniel not called to begin with? Why was he not? Well, I think it's been mentioned here because he was out of service. Isn't that right? After Nebuchadnezzar passed away, and then it was for several years that he was kind of out of commission. I guess it wasn't there in that position. And uh, so they didn't think about calling him or maybe they didn't want to hear from him. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a new generation that was on the scene. And sometimes mm -hmm. the new generation doesn't want to hear what the older folks sometimes have have to say when there's certainly you know wisdom in, in, in counsel here and the, so the king's mother came in she knew uh, she knew what had happened uh, you know with her husband she knew about it and so uh, she knew said there is someone who can interpret this and you need to bring him in because we need to know what's going on because they knew he knew right he knew when this was going on Belshazzar that something Big was about to happen yeah. Yeah. because it did. It was talking about he was quiver. He went to pieces. May I use that? He went to pieces. You said he's That's quivering right. and he's shaking. You know, and there he was. He was before his people. The king's not supposed to quiver and shake and carry on. But I think maybe he, oh boy, I think maybe he <laughs> lost control of everything. <laughs> <laughs> that happens, you know, in times of war and different things like that. When That's you get right. so nervous and you're so torn up, I, I just right. didn't want to say that, but I think maybe lost bodily function and so on and so forth to have. the point that I'm talking about he was humiliated, he was embarrassed and things that the king wouldn't want it to be out because God was bringing him down to where That's God right. had said he needed to be. So mom helps out here. She comes to get his attention. Daniel 5 verse 11, the last part. She said again, the king son, the king. The king. <laughs> and he's going, oh, oh, he's all shook up, right? Oh, what do you mean the king? She said, thy, thy grandfather, the king. G -g -g listen, son, I say. So she comes back again. Son, the king, I say, listen to me. I say, the grandfather, notice it, made, made him master, Daniel, master all of the magicians, the astrologers, and the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And I certainly love Daniel 5, verse 12, the last line the queen said, said, notice it. And I believe she said, as we talked about, in faith, believing. I believe, notice this, let Daniel be called and he will do what? Give, 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 give the interpretation. interpretation. He will give the interpretation. So here we see what? We see faith That's in right. operation. She knew it. She had experienced it. She was one of the few in the kingdom that had this knowledge of who Daniel was and what he did before. And sometimes that takes that. 
you know, in, in ministry, it takes it in churches, it takes it to, you need people with, right. um, say, experience, but gray hair. There's Aaron to be pillars and because they have learned a lot That's right. from life through it really ex experience. And sometimes there's been goods, they've been bad, but they've good experiences. And so it's good to gain counsel and to ask counsel and mm -hmm. wisdom. And when she knew this, she wanted to bring it to her son because she knew something bad, I believe, was about to happen. It needed to be deciphered because God Amen. was still sitting on his throne. God was still working, but he was bringing down a kingdom, preparing for the next mm -hmm. kingdom to come up because all nations and all people are giving just a certain amount of time. That's probationary time that God gives to everybody. Mm -hmm. And that shows us certainly from Babylon, Medo, Persia, Greece, and Rome, and it goes on down to the kingdoms. So let's make sure you make your right choice and your right decision because your Amen. time may be coming, but it's writing on the wall. Woo. Mm. Woo. Wednesday, weighed and found wanting. Oh my. So here the armies of Medo, Persia, have Babylon surrounded. The young king is in there having, he's partying hardy. When the fingers of the man's hand write this on the wall, this thought occurred to me. When have we seen the finger of God write anything in scripture before? Ten commandments. The Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. If this is God's finger, wow. this is the other thing that God has written. In That's you. right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of an interesting yeah, right. thought. So the king and the sages certainly sensed that there was something ominous about this message that they, it was a cryptic message. They couldn't decode it. Mm -hmm. So now forced by circumstances, the king reluctantly calls Daniel. Mm -hmm. And you think about this, the God that the king was mocking was Daniel's mm, God. Mm, yeah. He knew that. <laughs> so let's look at verse 13, Daniel 5, verse 13. Daniel was brought in before the king and the king spoke and said to Daniel, are you that Daniel who is one of the captives from Judah, whom mm. my father, the king brought from Judah? I have heard of you that the spirit of God is in you mm -hmm. and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. Mm -hmm. Now the wise men, the astrologers have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known to me its interpretation, mm -hmm. but they could not. Mm -hmm. They could not give the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of you twice. He said that, that you can give interpretations and explain enigmas. Now, if you can read the writing, and make known to me its interpretation. Mm -hmm. You shall be clothed with purple mm -hmm. and have a chain of gold around your neck oh. and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. And Daniel answered and said <laughs> before the king, let your gifts be for yourself. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Give your rewards you to another. Mm -hmm. Yet I will read the writing to the king and make known to him the interpretation. Verse, First of all, let's verse. point this out. Daniel's character, his priorities, he's not interested in a reward. No. Mm -hmm. he's, he's wanting to be God's man still. That's right. And you know what else? Because he understood the message, mm -hmm. he knew the rewards were worthless because <laughs> Babylon's going to be conquered yes. that very <laughs> night. So the rewards would be non-existent, right? Right. <laughs> Interestingly, he did not demonstrate the same level of respect to Belshazzar as he had to Nebuchadnezzar. Hmm. I mean, this is kind of interesting. And I'm, I'm sure it's because mm -hmm. he's rebuking him because mm -hmm. Belshazzar has taken and defied the Lord by using these temples, these holy vessels from the temple mm -hmm. in an unholy way. He has profaned God. So listen to verse 18. O king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar, your father, the kingdom, the majesty, glory and honor. And because of the majesty that he gave him, all peoples, nations and languages trembled and feared before him. Whomever he wished, he executed. Whomever he wished, he kept alive. Whomever he wished, he set up. Whomever he wished, he put down. But when his heart was lifted up, and his spirit was hardened in pride. Mm -hmm. He was deposed from his kingly throne. They took the glory from him 
driven from the sons of men. His mm. heart was made like the beast and his dwelling was with the wild donkeys. They fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew mm. that the most high God mm. rules yeah. in the kingdom That's of right. men That's right. and appoints over it whomever he chooses. But you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart. Mm -hmm. Although you knew all of this. Mm -hmm. That's big. That's Belshazzar mm -hmm. was old enough to know all of this. You have lifted yourself up against the Lord of heaven. Mm -hmm. They have brought the vessels of his house before you. You and your lords, your wives, your concubines have drunk wine from them. And you have praised the gods of silver, gold, bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which do not see or hear or know. And the God who holds your breath in his hands and owns all of your ways, you have not glorified. Mm. So here we have Daniel reprimanding Belshazzar mm -hmm. for all of his, failure, his failures on several counts. And as I said, Belshazzar knew. He was old enough to know a Nebuchadnezzar's story, but he completely ignored it. Otherwise, yeah. he would have repented right. and humbled himself. So here he is taking the vessels of God. He is exalting himself mm. and blaspheming God mm. by drinking this wine from it. And he neglected the God who held oh. his breath in his hand. Wow. He was guilty of pride, oh. blasphemy, idolatry, oh. and failing to glorify God. So for these reasons, the writing on the wall in three Aramaic words... Now, the first word is repeated. Let's get to that. This is a message of judgment and doom. The fingers of the hand were sent from him. Mm -hmm. They were sent from God. This writing was written. I'm reading verse 24. And this is the inscription that was written. This is Daniel speaking. Many, many tekel upharsin. Many means numbered. Now, he doubled that mm -hmm. for uh, the, the stronger emphasis. Many, many. Tekel means weighed or assessed. So this is the God who weighs actions. Mm. You farsen. Okay, let's look at that. You in front of the word farsen. Farsen is the plural of peris which actually Paris means to uh, be divided. Mm -hmm. So Farson is the plural. Mm -hmm. You in front of it, just and. Mm -hmm. So he is saying, and this is the interpretation of each word. Many, God has numbered your kingdom and finished. Mm -hmm. Tekel, you've been weighed yes. in the balances and found wanting. Whew, that's the worst yes. thing that, to me, that could be happening. Mm -hmm. Paris, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Babylon would be destroyed and dissolved that very mm. night. We'd be taken over mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. the Medo-Persian Empire. Mm -hmm. Judgment came swiftly upon Belshazzar. And what we need to do is learn to trust God in cases when judgment doesn't always come swiftly. <laughs> Let me read just a few references here. Ecclesiastes 3.17 says, uh, Solomon writes, I said in my heart, God shall mm -hmm. judge the righteous and the wicked mm -hmm. for there is a time for every purpose yes. and for every work. Mm -hmm. Solomon again writes in chapter 8 and verse 11 of Ecclesiastes. Because the sentence against an evil work is hmm. not executed speedily, That's right. therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set on them to do evil. Hmm. Sometimes people think they're getting away with something oh, that's right. yeah. when they don't see it. Hmm. And then in Ecclesiastes 12, 14, he says, God will bring hmm. every work into judgment. Amen including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Mm -hmm. You can't hide anything no. from God. Right. Right. So 
I think that Paul echoes what Solomon wrote in Romans 14, 12. And here's, here's the summation of it all. So then, each of us shall give account of himself to God. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be found weighed in the balance mm -hmm. and wanting. Mm -hmm. You know, salvation is not by work. Salvation is by grace alone. But when we enter into covenant relationship with God, we are to obey him to show our covenant love and loyalty mm -hmm. to him. Mm -hmm. And we certainly, God has a standard. God is going to judge everything that we've done. Mm -hmm. Every work will come into judgment and we're all going to have to give an account mm -hmm. of ourself before the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank Mercy. you. Yes. You know, when we talk about Babylon, which we have been focusing on in this particular study, we find that there's some amazing parallels, and I know that Jill and all of you have brought this out, between the Babylon of Daniel's day and the Babylon of John's day, or mm -hmm. the Babylon of antiquity and the Babylon, Babylon of spiritual application mm -hmm. in the end time. I thought it was kind of, I think, needless to say, useless to give someone any kind of recognition of honor when your kingdom just ended. Mm -hmm. You're going to be yeah. third in my kingdom that's ending in 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's kind of what yeah. Belshazzar yeah. was in fact saying. My kingdom is coming to an end, so therefore I won't need this anymore, so put it on him. Mm -hmm. oh. And that was an amazing thing. We find, though, what I want to point out is the reasons why Babylon came to an end. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that Nebuchadnezzar had a dream mm -hmm. of four worldly empires. Later on, when we get to Daniel 7, we're going to see that, that Daniel has a vision of these four empires. But the real questions that I'd like to list right here, reasons for Babylon's fall. First of all, let's go to Jeremiah 51.7. Jeremiah 51.7. We know that one of the things that Belshazzar did was he poured wine into the ve vessels of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And let's see what that wine did. Not only did it defile the vessels of the Lord, but it had an effect to it. Uh -huh. Jeremiah 51, verse 7. Babylon was a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunk. Mm. Same comparison in Revelation 17 right. and 18. The nations drank her wine, therefore the nations are deranged. Yeah. Now let's go. We know that the ancient Babylon is destroyed, but Babylon is a coalition. That's right. It's a coalition. Mm -hmm. It's not just a religious power. Mm -hmm. It's a satanic power. Mm -hmm. It's a religiously corrupt power. Mm -hmm. And it's a uh, spiritually corrupt power. So let's bring out a few things here. And I'll get, that in, I'll get to that in just a moment. So the first reason why Babylon was destroyed is because of the def defilement. Yes. Okay. That is still happening today. The nations of the earth, Babylon is described in Revelation as the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. The merchants of the earth have been made rich through the abundance of her luxuries. So the influence of Babylon is both social, political, and economic. That's right. It's also moral mm -hmm. because the woman is referred to as a harlot. Mm -hmm. So you find the entire world is being corrupted by a system that's described by God as Babylon. Mm -hmm. Then the Bible says her sins have reached unto heaven. Right. Well, that's how Babylon began. They be began building a tower that reached unto heaven. Wow. Yes. So yes. now her sins have reached unto heaven. Her own works have, have been the precursor to spell her demise. The other thing that she did was unwilling to honor God. Mm. You are weighed in the balances and found wanting. wanting, unwilling to honor God, an unwillingness to honor God. Thirdly, and most importantly, Jeremiah 25, verse 12. The third reason why Babylon came to its end is because God willed it. Mm. God willed yeah. it. Jeremiah 25, verse 12. Then it will come to pass when 70 years are completed that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, the land of the Chaldeans, for their iniquity, says the Lord, and I will make it a perpetual desolation. So notice what the Lord prophesied long before Belshazzar did this. He said because of the nature of that nation, they're going to come to an end based on their iniquity. But not only that, 
I'm going to give them 70 years to rule over my people. And at the end of that time, yeah. I'm going to punish them. I never favored Babylon, but here's the point I got out of that. Sometimes God uses our enemies well. to lead us back to obedience and an acknowledgement of who he is. Good, God yeah. used Babylon's enemies. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why is because they wanted to live like the Babylonians. They began to follow a lifestyle that was synonymous with the way they live in Babylon. Mm -hmm. So he said, if you want to live like Babylon, you need to live in Babylon. Oh. Same reason why the Israelites would cart it off to Egypt. If you want to live like Egypt, live in Egypt. And the fourth reason, Daniel 5, verse 26. The reason why Babylon came to an end is because it was prophesied. Mm. Oh. It yeah. was prophesied. That's, That's right. the major reason. Even if Belshazzar had a party of two, it was coming to an end. <laughs> Even if he yeah. served Kool-Aid, yeah. it was coming to an end. That's right, brother. Even if all they had was a half a glass of Kool-Aid and some Snicker bars, well. it was coming to an end, right? Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says, mm -hmm. this is the interpretation. God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. God gave them only a certain period of time right. to reign. And the prophetic integrity was to let us know that, yes, Isaiah 46, verse 9 and 10, the end from the beginning. Babylon was just the first in the unfolding of the great nations of the world. Medo-Persia was next, yeah. Greece was next, mm -hmm. and Rome was next. Mm -hmm. And Rome is still existing to this very day, but it has its part. But I want to also point out the coalition of Babylon. Let's go to Revelation chapter 17. Oh. Revelation chapter 16, actually. Revelation chapter 16, um, I, did a, I did a lesson called uh, The Final Call or The Fall of Babylon. And Revelation 16 and verse 13 brings out a very significant element of Babylon. Notice what it says. Revelation 16, 13. Oh, boy. Uh, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the Dragon. dragon out of the mouth of the beast, beast, beast and out of the mouth of the false, false prophets. prophets. Now, to know that this is describing Babylon, we just need to look at verse 12. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river, what? Euphrates. Euphrates. That's the river that secured Babylon. That's right. And its waters was dried up so that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Mm -hmm. That was the, Medo, that was the Medo, Median army that came under the wall and brought that party to an end. Uh, that was the last song that they played that night. But notice the comparisons. The three, uh, the three components of Babylon is the uh, dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. Mm. Yeah. Now, the dragon is described in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 to 9 as Satan, mm -hmm. that serpent of old called the devil and Satan. We interpret that today. Anything connected with Satan is connected with the system of spiritualism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All these forms of false worship, uh, Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, 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 silver mind control, Shakti yoga, all these uh, spiritualistic arts are motivated by a spiritualistic spirit out of the mouth of the dragon. He speaks these things also connected to that in the Christian realm. This is odd to say that also connected to the system of corruption spiritually in the Christian realm mm. is the idea of the immortality of the soul. Mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no immortal soul. The, the immortality of the soul is also a teaching that came out of Babylon. Yeah. But there's a second component, the beast. Now, the beast that's described here was, was described earlier in Revelation. And in the latter parts of Revelation, the woman sitting on a scarlet-colored beast. Right. Well, who is she? The beast has seven heads and ten horns. Right back to the d description given in, about Babylon in Daniel chapter 7. Mm -hmm. Then also in Revelation chapter 12 and in Revelation chapter 17, the consistency, Revelation chapter 13, the beast rising up out, out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns, mm -hmm. showing the consistency of the power of Rome. That's right. Mm -hmm. This corrupt system that we now know as Catholicism, not the people, but the system itself mm -hmm. is corrupt. And the Bible says the dragon gave him his power, his seat and great authority. So it's amazing that the dragon, then the seat and the power that he was given to, or he received, comes from Satan himself. Mm -hmm. so, so Catholicism, a corrupt system, Babylon is a corrupt system. Right. 
Thirdly, you have the false prophets. Now, a true prophet proclaims God's word, right. but a false prophet does not proclaim God's word. But a false prophet has an appearance of a prophet. Mm. Uh -huh. But Paul in, in, in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 13 and 14, he says, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the minister, ministers of righteousness. So a false prophet is one who does not pass the integrity of God's word. I have to make this very, very quick. Now, the woman has on purple and red, right? right? right. Numbers 15, chapter 30, verse 37. Yeah. Blue was the color that's missing. That's right. Mm. And blue yes. was a symbol. I have to say this. Give me an extra second here. The Lord said, speak to the children of Israel. Tell them to make tassels. And the tassels were to be blue. What was the purpose of the tassels that were on the garment? And it says that you may not follow the harlot That's right. to which your own heart and your own eyes are inclined that you may remember and do all my commandments. Mm -hmm. The description of this harlot, right. she only has purple and red. She's missing blue because in Babylon, the commandments of God are not there. That's, right. Ooh, that's, right. that's, that's good. That's good. Absolutely. So here's the key. If you are part of a system where the Ten Commandments of God are not nullified or modified, get out because Amen. Babylon is fallen. Amen. That's right. Mm. Good. Amen. Thank you so Absolutely. much. What an incredible study. Who yeah. knew we could get all of that out of Daniel chapter 5? <laughs> and there's much more. We could keep going, but we're almost out of time. Yes. So I want to give each one of you a moment to share something about yeah, the list. You know, it's powerful because in this story, this story includes the details of a father, king, going away and entrusting his son Mm -hmm. to take care of the kingdom. Mm. And this son, who's in apostasy, of course, he's encamped by the enemy and loses the kingdom. And I was thinking as we were going down the line, I thought, you know, I, I praise the Lord that I serve a God who has given dominion and a kingdom to his son, and we can trust in that son. Yeah, that's right. So I want to put my trust in Jesus Christ to know that uh, I don't have to wait for the enemy to come and camp around me. You put your trust in Jesus and your kingdom won't fall. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's good. Beautiful. <laughs> Found something from the youth instructor 519 in 1898 says this, when God makes men fear, they cannot hide the intensity of that terror. Alarm sees the great men of the kingdom, their blasphemous disrespect for sacred things changed in a moment he had found a power too strong for him amen mm. when you think of weight in the balances and found wanting you think of those scales of justice that we see so often and it just occurred to me you may be sitting at home mm. thinking boy if god were to weigh me in the balance oh, right, right now I'm, I'm going to be found wanting. And I just wanted to tell you, 1 John 1, 9 mm -hmm. is a promise that you can use. And mm -hmm. that is yeah. that God will, if you confess your yes. sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you That's your right. sins and cleanse you Amen. of all unrighteousness. He offered that to Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. who took him up on it. Mm -hmm. Belshazzar wasn't so smart. That's right. Babylon the Great is fallen. You know, this great city that rules over the kings of the earth has to fall because the only, there's only room for one city. That's, right. That's the holy city. Amen. So Amen. get out of the great city and make room for the holy city. Amen. New Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Right. Thank you so much, Pastor John, Amen. Shelley, Pastor Kenny, and Pastor Ryan for opening up the word of God. What an incredible, this is using your word, Amen. what an incredible study. I have been so blessed Amen. by the study of the word of God. And I just want to make a special appeal to you at home. You might you will at some point or another mm -hmm. face a night like that. We all at some point have to make a choice. Are we going to follow Jesus? Or are we going to worship the beast and his image? Mm. So make a choice. God is appealing to your heart right now. Mm -hmm. Make a choice to accept him. He will forgive you and cleanse you and you can be saved in his kingdom at last. Join us next week as we study from the lion's den to the angel's den. Mm -hmm.